Hey there, we're Nigel and Sue, and these are our adventures. In this episode, we tackle the Marini Loop, a 160 kilometre off road shortcut from the West McDonnell Ranges to Kings Canyon. We stay at an incredible cliff top free camp, take an educational Indigenous culture tour, and hike the Kings Canyon Rimwalk. Subscribe to our channel and join us as we travel Australia in our self-converted 4x4 Sprinter van. Well, hey friends, we are back on the road and where are we heading today, Nige? Uh, somewhere on the Marini Loop. <laughs> I don't really know where, but yeah, see how far we get. Yeah, so we are heading on to the Marini Loop, which is a 160 kilometer dirt road. We've heard conflicting reviews. Some have said it's really rough and others have said it's pretty easy. Now we have heard people have seen dingoes and wild brumbies there, so here's hoping. Yeah, we must see some wildlife, wouldn't it? We haven't seen wildlife at all, apart from birds. Okay, well we've got a pack today, we're not saying anything about the road. Good or bad. We always put the mocker on. <laughs> so, zip it. people on the radio saying that there are brumbies up ahead. Oh, and donkeys. Donkeys. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. Where oh. we see them? I don't know how far ahead these people are from us, but it can't be too far because the range of the radio isn't that strong. People are in the wrong gear and they're trying to, you know, the tires are spinning. So we just had a real bad, bad patch. Hopefully, when we get up and over the other side and turn the corner, it'll improve. But this is, man, this has been nasty. This bit, it feels like our shock's going to fall apart, and, and my nerves are going to fall apart. <laughs> I had a cup of tea, <laughs> banana cake. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old van's gonna fall. Stove's gonna fall out. Stop it. No, it's not. So we stopped and had a cup of tea to um, calm poor Nigel's nerves a little bit. And um, we're continuing on. We've only got about 30 kilometres to go now to the place where we're going to be camping tonight. And then I think about another 20, 25 or so to go tomorrow to get us to Kings Canyon. So it's a free camp that we're going to stay at tonight. We're currently driving along what we affectionately know as the chicken track, which is right over on the side, out of the road. camp and the views from here are incredible. 
some of the... Cheers, friends. We've yeah. just arrived at our free camp. Where's the van? Oh, well, you think you might be able to just see yeah. it up through the trees there. Um, and we're at, I think it's called the Ben Rorty Lookout or something like that. That's spectacular. <laughs> Place to pull up for the night after being rattled to bits for four hours. <laughs> God. Yeah, that uh, uh, Marini loop was a bit brutal, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't particularly nice in the, in the air van. And we only saw one horse, Pretty no slow. dingoes, one uh, Brumby. Yeah, one Brumby and two joggers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's a pretty cool sunset. Our campsite neighbours are playing some cool country tunes. Everyone else has like these little campfires. Little, little. <laughs> Nigel has an inferno. <laughs> Good morning, friends. This morning we got up quite early. Actually, we've been up for a little while as um, we wanted to check out the sunrise. It's, and the surprising thing is it wasn't too cold last night and look at the sunrise and we've got the remnants of that full moon up there too we're back on the dirt of the Marini loop uh, I hope you can hear and um, we've heard it's only 8 kilometres <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless you. It's a bit dusty. We've heard it's only eight kilometres. <laughs> Sorry. We've heard it's only eight kilometres along the dirt, so we're going to just check it out. Um, road conditions are pretty much the same as they were yesterday. We're heading yeah, directly shit. for Kings Canyon to do the walk this morning. This morning we are going to hike the Canyon Rim at Kings Canyon. This is an amazing hike and going to be an absolute highlight of our trip. I've been looking forward to doing this for a long, long time. The rim walk starts from this little information shelter here. There's a video going, you might be able to hear it behind me, with all sorts of information, particularly safety information about this walk. It's a six kilometre loop, class to grade four, which means it's difficult. Um, suggested time is three to four hours in the warmer months if the forecast temperature is over 36 degrees you need to start this walk before nine we are starting the walk now it is 10 23 and we'll see how long it takes us it's quite breezy today actually it's windy <laughs> um we're just wondering what it's going to be like up at the top i guess we'll find out when we get there so the first part of this walk is just along this um like sealed paved trail <laughs> told you it was windy Nigel just lost his hat and from here we go and climb 500 stairs up to the top of the cliffs even halfway up and I'm already the views are incredible.
what we see right here is a great example of uh, cross bedding in these beehive type um, rock formations. This is where we see dune turn to rock and millions of years ago the, the wind would blow the sand in, in different um, layers and then uh, over millions of years it's then um, being compressed and turned into, into rock and if I bend down here, I'll pick up a, pick up a rock it looks red but um, it's actually not it's sand, compressed sand um, which is the Marini sandstone and then the uh, the red as we see it is the bit the dust right the red red dirt um, a lot of oxide deposit um, sort of glued onto the outside and gives us the impression the rock's actually red <laughs> We've come now to the little turn off to Cottrell's lookout, 600 metres return. So we're going to go up here, we're going to um, make this little detour. So you hear the beehives. Yeah. We're at the top of Cottrell Lookout now. It's quite windy up here. And this is the high point on this side. So from here, we can yeah, see yeah. out over the canyon and down. Hold your hats. Yeah, I wanna lose it down that 400 foot drop. It's really crazy looking over to the other rim of the canyon and knowing we'll be over there shortly. Look at those people, they look tiny and they're way too close to the edge. It's a long way down, people. What we're seeing here is a, is a moment captured in time 400 million odd years ago. And these ripples are evidence that um, this area used to be covered in, uh, in lakes. So apparently what happened was the, there were like the ripples in the bottom of the seabed or lake bed and then other stones came and settled on top of that and eventually they've worn away when the water subsided. So we're left with this ripple effect on the rocks. Yeah, this poem by Judith Wright sums it up lovely. It um, goes like this. A long curved wash of ripple left there its fingerprint one long before time lost day. I turn a dead sea's leaves and touch that day and look. So we're coming down now into this little side gully. You can see it's like an oasis in here. There's all these trees. There's a lot of water flows down here. There's a lot of underground water. And in fact, we're heading to a water hole now known as the Garden of Eden. Heaps of psych heads. 
I'm looking out for dinosaurs. <laughs> so this is another 600 metre side detour to the Garden of Eden waterhole. It's a very sacred place to the richer people who are the uh, indigenous traditional owners of this land and they ask that nobody swims in it. They don't swim in here, so they ask that nobody else does. They say it's okay to splash your face with the water, but please don't go swimming in the water hole. We've stopped at the Garden of Eden to have our peanut butter sandwiches for lunch. Hmm. It's such a beautiful spot to just sit here rub right by the water hole. And there was a group of French teenagers, but now they've gone. So we're all alone here, which is really nice. We've just learnt from a uh, plaque there that these domes, or we've been calling them beehives affectionately, uh, form by uh, vertical lines in the in the rock, and then over, like you know, making cubes, and then over many many millions of years, erosion has uh, has happened to form these rounded edges that have become domes. Yeah, that, that's like a lost city when you use your imagination. So we've been walking along the top of the other side of the canyon for a while now and we're just about to cross a little bridge and go through a gate. So there is a second walk that you can do called the South Rim Walk which just brings you along the southern edge of the canyon and the turnaround point is at this gate here so if you're coming that way you can't come through the gate and so you can't actually do this loop in reverse this is kind of a a woe moment coming up Says what? Oh, you're standing on a cube there, so. The final part of the walk is in some ways the hardest because it's um, very much hard on the knees as you go down these steps. Quite rough steps, very uneven, but it's not far to go now. I can see the van. We had a bit of a um, casualty on the Marini loop. <laughs> Somehow part of the framework. I brought me, I brought me door, Dad. <laughs> Yeah, this little bit of framework there mm. has come away. I noticed it was um, scraping a couple of days ago. Yeah, it's just, just kind of like... Yeah, it's weird. weird yeah. Good morning, friends. We're just packing up camp. We actually stayed last night in a caravan park, which is not something we do very often. So we were on an unpowered site here. One of the reasons we don't stay in caravans very often is $50 for this patch of gravel on the red dirt um, yes there were hot showers yes there were washing machines but we also had to pay for the washing machine so it's probably one of the most expensive car well it is the most expensive caravan park we've ever stayed at and fortunately there is a free camp um, 
does mean driving it's actually about 10 kilometers on the dirt we will be staying there tonight so today we are going to check out the Kark Aboriginal cultural experience Nigel's just in um, having a chat with the folks um, paying the entrance fee and we also wanted to make sure with them before we go in that it is okay to film here and to take photographs of them. Often Indigenous people don't like to uh, have their photo taken. We couldn't take video but photos were fine. Siblings Peter and Natasha provided an exceptional educational experience and we highly recommend checking out the Kark tour when you're in the Red Centre. Today we're at Kings Canyon again and we're about to do a second walk here which is called the Kings Creek Walk. So whereas yesterday we went up and along the rim of the canyon, today we're going right up the middle of the canyon. So this walk's only about two kilometres. We're going to get to see those beautiful coloured walls from a completely different perspective. Here in this little shelter there's a whole lot of information about the walks including a video presentation. Not sure if you can see it. Um, yesterday when we came up here to do the canyon rim walk I had to like hide Nigel's eyes. I didn't want him to see that because he'd never seen Kings Canyon. He hadn't really seen pictures. He didn't had no idea what to expect and um, I didn't want him to see it on the video. last night at Kings Creek Station because we were hoping to get internet which didn't really eventuate but they've got camels and a donkey baby camels so this is why they have all the camels I guess I will not be eating a camel burger it's super windy today. We were thinking about going back to Kings Canyon as our drone permit just arrived yesterday. We didn't realize it before we went out on the walk, but obviously it's way too windy to be flying a drone. So no more Kings Canyon for us. We're gonna head to Uluru. So we'll see you there in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching.